Uh, I'm going to start drifting this. This is my drift. This is a piece of uh, probably tractor drive shaft or uh, maybe a PTO shaft. It was found in a field where my father-in-law was growing watermelons, but I made this drift out of it. It keeps me far enough away that I'm not going to get super hot, burn my hand. But uh, got to get that nice and uh, nice and hot before we start drifting. But I like to drift this up. I make a pretty good size eye, even for these small uh, these small axes. I still want to get a good size eye. I also want to try and taper them from the top to the bottom. That way, uh, like right now, we can get the tip through. We're going to start start drifting. To start it on one side and then work to the other side because otherwise you'll end up with a little bit of a tag sticking out the other side. I don't cool my drift when I'm slitting. I cool my slitting chisel so that it doesn't get overheated and lose the, the temper on the edge. So my drift, I don't do that. I want to keep the heat in the drift so that it doesn't take away from the eye. As you drift, come back periodically, tap those sides. You'll get your uh, you'll get your drift off a lot quicker and easier. You get the drift out of the material easier. somewhere with the eye sort of where I want to be once I start getting to where I can stick my tongs through it you can see that eyes get pretty good size for a hand axe it doesn't have to be extremely large but uh, I like to get that eye as, as large as I can with a hand axe it gives you more wood surface area more surface area on the uh, On the handles contact in the wood so the bigger the eye you can get the better never make your eye totally round make it oval shaped if you can get it oval shaped you're going to do better Keep that up. Uh, keep that eye nice and centered. Make sure you work yourself into that corner. Yeah, see, now I'm about where I want to be on this eye. So now I don't have to drift it anymore. I'm going to use the drift as a uh, spacer for my anvil and I'm going to forge against the drift. And I'm going to widen the eye cheeks out somewhat to give more bearing on the uh... see, I see that's as far as my drift will go. 
down into that anvil. That's all I need. So now, we're going to start working those cheeks out a little wider. that I uh, tapered from the bottom. Then it'll make it interesting to get the wedge in there and have it hold. If it's tapered from the top, the wedge is gonna hold better. We'll cut it off here in a minute. I'll cut it off here in a second and then start working down the edge. I'll try and get the cut. Actually, I'm going to do it first. I'll turn this around. Get that head nice and straight. Then get the eye in here. heat this up and cut it off and then I'll work the eye down some more because this extra bit hanging off the seat we got the eye nice and drifted now we're going to cut this about in here Got my cut scored around. This uh, Hardy's made from some 4140 uh, axle steel that I got. It's a Chevy axle. It, it fits in this bigger anvil. I need to make a, one for the hay button. The hay button has a smaller party opening and the old party that I originally had for it is this one and it's not as good as I make them anymore. It's the one I let the kids use when they're 40. Made it onto the floor. Not twice. This is what you end up with. I know it doesn't look like much. That anvil's uh, about four inches wide. That's about four inches long. Piece there. All right. So you don't want to smush the eye. side so that you keep it going easy. Alright. 
and just distract. Remember which side, you gotta remember which side's top. So when you're forging, you keep that flat top and the beard going downhill. The beard always goes downhill. A lot of slag in this fire right now. I'm gonna end up taking a break at lunch, restarting the fire, and doing a uh, cleaning out the slag. Right there. I'm using that corner of that anvil to uh, to work that edge out. See, we're pretty concentric. This is going to be a little shorter than I wanted it to be, but they have a little bit of ver <coughs> variation in them. This will be a good little belt axe. Good for splitting kindling. Good for carving. Good for fighting. cut that edge off with the hardy. I'll try and swing over and show you. Right there. Of course, I'm going to grind this, but so I cut a nice straight line when I uh, I can break it take some of that meat out that I'm working I can get a better curve better bevel on this edge here
it's all where it's supposed to be. Make sure this drift fits down in there. Make sure it's seated all the way to the back. Man, I like that. That drifted well. Big eye on it. I have a little bit of grinding left to do. Pretty good. Pretty straight. See, I got my H. Eyes nice. Teardrop shape. We're going to straighten the edge. And then I'm going to go for, a, I'm going to do an edge quench. My, uh, I like to do an edge quench on axes. About three quarters of an inch thick on my edge quench because I like to leave that body softer. Get that edge nice and straight. All right, I'm glad that didn't go in the clinch. Right down the center of the eye so that when I got my handle in there, it'll be straight. That's the main thing. Make that edge nice and straight right now while you can. That way you got less grinding to do. It's pretty close. Eyes uh, pretty straight. Alright, so I'm gonna heat it up and quench it. Now it's been quenched right there on that edge. I'm not turning my fire off yet. I'm going to show you something. All right. See that sound? That's hard. So. What I'm gonna do when it's skating like that, that's a brand new file. When I when I uh Alright, so I have the head in the edge of the fire. The fire is hot. What we're gonna do We're gonna allow that heat to run up that edge. See, see the see it's turning brown right here. Now watch it. When that brown, when that straw color reaches that edge, then I'll quench it. See right now, see it's a straw color all the way across. That's not bad. That's what we want. We want a straw color across that. I don't know if you can see it. I'm letting the heat run out to the edge. Now see a dark straw is coming, and the purple is behind that. So I'm gonna watch that dark straw. I don't want him to make it quite to the edge. So I'm gonna take that edge and I'm gonna go cool it. All right, so we got a dark straw 
coming out on the edge. And we got a straw out to the edge. That means this head is hot and it's there's water on that edge right now. But what I'm doing is a soft back, hard edge. This allows the, the, the axe head to have the most longevity because you have a good, nice hard edge along here for holding and it for holding a cutting edge. Then you have a soft back for strength and toughness and impact. So you want that toughness for that impact. I'm going to turn my fire off. <laughs> 